Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today we're probably going to discuss, uh, we're going to discuss the probably most important example class of examples of varieties, which are um, kind of not completely trivial and still very exciting. They come from linear algebra, we'll see what that means. And they go under the name Grassmannian, named after a mathematician called Grassmann. So they're the Grassmannians. And the idea is kind of to generalize projective space so they have a space in the space, um, we'll see what that means. But essentially what you should keep in mind and what I'm going to stress is that this is like the prototypical example of how to do, well, linear algebra, which is probably most the most important field ever in mathematics for how to do linear algebra with the help of uh, algebraic geometry. But let's get started, just as a reminder what projective space are because Grassmannians will generalize projective space. And I just said Grassmannians are the most important class of examples. Yeah, projective spaces also are an important class of examples, but maybe I count them actually as like, like affine and projective. So one of the crucial main ingredients of algebraic geometry in general, and I will call the Grassmannians examples. It's a little bit of matter of taste, but anyway. So projective space um, is this, this, uh, this P to the N, and there's usually this idea of having lines uh, in K to the N plus 1. So here lines in K squared would be projective 1 space. So you identify points on a line and you just make that a new point. Um, the al alternatively, and maybe more the topological idea, topological approach was, okay, if you identify points on a line anyway, then you can just put them on a circle. You can just say they are of radius 1, right? You identify anything on this line anyway, so you can just make them of radius 1. But then you still need to identify the antipodal points, because uh, the line goes through both points. So you can also realize projective space in this topological picture as a quotient of the sphere. So here uh, is S1 mod uh, antipodes. And yeah, so that's another way to realize uh, projective space. And it's certainly one of the most important examples, spaces, classes, main ingredients, whatever you want to call them, in not just in algebraic geometry, but they also play a crucial role in uh, topology, like in this identification of their essentially spheres, but you identify uh, opposite points. And you kind of want to generalize this picture. And what you do is you take the Grassmannian. The Grassmannian, if you think of this picture as projective space being lines, then there's a kind of immediate generalization that comes to mind. Just why do you, do you consider lines in the space? Why don't you consider planes in the space and identify them up to some appropriate scaling or something, or uh, higher volumes or something? And that's exactly where the Grassmannians come into the game. So here's my picture of this plane, an element of the Grassmannian, two, three, so three, let's say the real Grassmannian, where well, here's the real three space, so that's the number three, and the plane is two-dimensional, so 2D, that's the number two. And in general, uh, K, 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 G, G-like Grassmannian, GKN is a set of K planes in K to the N. And yeah, so like like lines or uh, like planes, whatever hyperplanes, higher, higher planes are, so higher lines, I call them higher lines. Um, the boring examples is, yeah, so zero and n, n are points, so that's, that's not that exciting. So the set of n planes in n space, there's only one, and the set of zero planes, so the points in n space, uh, and here uh, planes are meant in the sense of linear algebra, so you need to include uh, the origin, and then there are not many, not many uh, points in uh, in space. So um, the boring examples are those. The good example is uh, the projective space, right? Projective space is the, the kind of trivial Grossmannian where k is 1. With slightly kind of strange notation here that in my Grossmannian I really want them in k to the n and projective space is usually one higher, so there's some little shift in indices. But you can ignore that. Essentially, the k equals 1 example is projective space, which should convince you at this point that this uh, actually Grossmannians will kind of play an important role or at least natural objects to consider whether they play an important role depends a little bit on something crucial 
which you shouldn't be able to really see at this point, but it would depend on how much you can actually say about that picture. Keep in mind that you always can come up with kind of many, many kind of natural uh, generalizations of something, but the question is, can you say something about them? And the Grossmannians, you can, for a reason that will be become mostly clear on the on the final slide. But anyway, so how can we think about the Grassmannian? Looks pretty difficult. But if you have the picture of base change in mind, so uh, different coordinate systems. So if you pick a basis, then you can identify the elements of the Grassmannian by just n by k matrices because these are planes in that space of rank k, right? Rank k forces them to be those k planes. And then you can say, okay, those matrices are the same, even only if they are obtained from one another by base change. And for k equals 1, this is exactly the generalization of what homogeneous coordinates are, because, well, what is a base change in a one-dimensional space? It's identifying points up to the scalar. So the kind of the correct generalization of homogeneous coordinates is taking matrices of a certain rank up to uh, base change from one side. So let's say column or row equivalents. Yeah, that's kind of the base change condition, and it gives you a very hands-on picture of what elements in the Grassmannian actually are. They're rank K matrices. And that makes makes it believable, at least, and it, and it is true that you can actually say quite a lot about this class of examples. And that's why this is one of the most crucial examples ever, because it's kind of a natural example from linear algebra, right? So matrices up to a certain form of base change, generalizing um, projective space. And yeah, so Grothmannians are f prime varieties, they're projective varieties. I show you next time how to see that, that they are projective varieties. But they also appear in topology because they're kind of nice manifolds. They're differentiable uh, manifolds. So the standard example of a manifold and an atlas on a manifold is the world is a manifold and atlas is an atlas. <laughs> That's what it usually is. And for the Grassmannian, um, you can use a kind of kind of the coordinate description in terms of the matrices to cook up the manifold structure or to kind of to see the manifold structure uh, on the Grassmannian. And what is the dimension of the Grassmannian? It's k times n minus k. And that's easy to see. And I'll show you this on, on the next slide. But I hope you kind of can keep this example in mind because it's kind of really important and actually pretty nice and smooth. Uh, smooth in the sense of, of nice. <laughs> so it, it's very nice um, in the sense of it, it's linear algebra and you can study linear algebra with tools of topology or here with tools of algebraic geometry. It's kind of a nice example generalizing uh, projective space. And the way to think about them is because we allow, let's say, column operations on the matrix, um, we can always bring our matrix in this little form where here is just a k by k identity block and then because the matrix is n by k, so uh, this number here is n minus k, right, because this number here is n, fantastic, and this number is still k, and now you can see the dimension of the space, k times n minus k, because you have still those three variables, and every element in the Grassmannian can be identified with such a matrix, yeah? so you have those 811 up to 8k, k minus n minus k, k entries uh, in the matrix, and these are the elements of the Grassmannian, they parameterize the elements of the Grassmannian, and that's why you get the certain dimension uh, for the Grassmannian. And I think that's a really nice picture. So I said again, so Grassmannian is really uh, matrices, yeah, up to a certain type of base change of a certain fixed rank, let's say rank K. And you can always bring them in, uh, in this echelon form by just column operations. And whatever ends up at the bottom in this little picture, yeah, this little box here, that's exactly what parameterizes elements of the Grassmannian, and, well, it's immediate then that you have dimension k times n minus k. Anyway, so Grassmannian's really crucial example in linear algebra, algebraic geometry and topology at the same time, and probably even way more. And yeah, it's kind of believable that you can say something about them because they are built from linear algebra that's essentially just the, the echelon form of uh, a matrix. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.